before we go any farther, we need to talk about caching and define what caching is so you get a full understanding of that. Because caching is a significant part of Drupal site performance improvement and performance improvement for any type of website, really. When web developers talk about caching, they're really talking about a range of things. Caching as a broad term refers to the process of storing information in some easily accessible place so that it can be retrieved quickly. The analogy I always use is that of an office worker who's in charge of retrieving documents for whoever asks for them. Say there are rows and rows and maybe even floors of file cabinets that this office worker is in charge of. They're all organized perfectly, but it takes time for this person to get up, go to the correct floor, the correct row, and the correct folder in that drawer to find the requested document, then go back and hand that document to the person asking for it. If there are, say, 10 documents that are requested on a regular basis, that office worker is probably going to keep copies of those documents at his desk to save the time of retrieving it every time it is requested. That way he can just hand it to them from his desk without having to do all the work involved in retrieving that document. Caching works pretty much the same way, but it's important to note that there are a number of different types of caching as it relates to websites. So here's a very simplistic diagram of what happens when a web browser tries to access a URL at your site or tries to access just information in general from your site. Here's the browser over here. It sends a request in the form of a URL. That request makes it to your server. Your server takes it and hands it off to your website, which consists basically of your files, your file system, and your database, all of the information stored in your database. The file system and PHP get that request for that URL. They do a little bit of talking with the database to get all of the information. The database hands that back to the file system and sort of fills in all the blanks in the, in the template with the pertinent information from whatever node is related to the information being requested. The site puts that together in an HTML file, basically, hands that back to your server, and then the server delivers that to the browser of the person accessing your site. Caching can happen in a number of different places in this process. It can happen here on the side of the client's browser, which is fittingly often referred to as client-side or browser-side caching. This usually takes place in the form of caching images or CSS and JavaScript files. Often, the user's browser will cache that information because those are things that aren't likely to change very often. So it caches those things on its own. So if it visits the same website twice, it'll probably use the same style sheet for a certain amount of time so that it doesn't have to re-download that style sheet or those images every time it visits the same page. Because again, those things are not likely to change often. Server-side caching is when the server itself caches information. We're not gonna go too deep into this because this is not really this doesn't really happen within the scope of Drupal itself, but there are solutions here that are geared toward sites like Drupal, such as Varnish. This is just a bit outside the scope of this tutorial, but what server-side caching is, is if someone requests a page from your site, their server receives that request, your site goes through, through the rest of the process of finding all of the information and handing it back to that server. And with server-side caching, what happens is, this is kind of like the document keeper, keeping that document at his, at his desk. The server keeps its own cache of information. So next time another visitor comes and asks for the same exact page, the server doesn't even ask your website anything. In fact, your website itself doesn't do any work at all in these cases. The server just takes that because it knows that this little document that it's stored is exactly what the browser is looking for. It's exactly what your website is going to hand back to it. So it just hands that right back to the browser. That's server-side caching, and again, that's outside the scope of this tutorial, so we're not going to really talk about that very much. Caching can also happen on the location of your website. It can happen within your file system, and pages can also, can also be cached in the database. Drupal primarily caches information within its database. So, when your site's delivering cached information, it still has to access the database when retrieving that information, but 
It does so in such a way that it has the page stored in its entirety in one place, so it doesn't have to access multiple tables of the database and piece together all of the information. It just gets the page, which is nice. This would be like the equivalent of the document keeper, not having to go to six different drawers to piece together lots of different information. It keeps a cache of one complete document and just grabs that when a subsequent user asks for the same page. In the site's file system, when information is cached here, this is usually in the form of a fully generated HTML file of the page being requested. This isn't as close as the server to the browser, but it does save your site the work of accessing the database to retrieve information. There was a module for this in Drupal 7, but as of this recording, there is no module to do this for Drupal 8, and many current many developers actually currently think that Drupal 8's caching is robust enough to where we don't need caching in the form of files in the file system. So with that quick rundown of what caching is and what the different types of caching are, just keep in mind that in this tutorial, what we're going to cover and what most of Drupal's functionality provides are ways to tell browsers what kind of information to cache and how long to cache that information as well as caching its own information within its database.